I agree on. So I, it's not like I don't agree to, to hide all those things, but um, I disagree with not having an efficient replacement at that point. Four handles will be fairly efficient. I mean, I've done benchmarking and I can get down to unsafe performance one? with them. Bar handle. Bar handle. Both yeah. on, on, heap, on heap things and arbitrary peaks and pokes and on the But it doesn't solve all the use cases. What are you it's using? a very, very specific use what case. What use cases are you missing? I um, think, you know what? This, this goes beyond just uh, use cases, right? If you're trying yeah. to retrofit a system that is restricting access over what has so far been free range, right? Without a migration path. Now, if we look at back at what happened with Invoke Dynamic, you know, a lot of people were streaming and saying, like, okay, we need Invoke Dynamic for all those, you know, nefarious reasons for, you know, very good reasons and everything like that. And you know, if you look at what Charlie Nutter did with it, right, when he finally got it, what did he do with it? Nothing. Why? Because he was pinned. Yes. He was pinned by his users onto older versions of the JVM. So he actually couldn't move forward with the implementation because he had to have backwards compatibility uh, in the environment. So they're only now, just now, being able to bring um, Invoke Dynamic into, in, into JRuby. It's taken them that long, right? So without a proper migration path from where we were to where we're going, this whole thing is going to basically pin people at Java 8. They won't, they won't be able to move forward. And, okay? and what Jigsaw is completely missing is a migration path. And now unsafe is only a symptom of this underlying problem. What does the migration path look like? I have no idea. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, it's impossible if you've got to restrict things that so, work. So, so I, I think, to be, to be honest, um, there, there is some kind of migration path. Because we get a parameter to, to enable unsafe in Java 9, yes. which is or to re-export yes. the hidden package, which, from my perspective, has two problems. Either it will be a default parameter for everybody, and it will eventually be removed, removed, and you have the same problem over again. What What are you missing in more handles? I have not found an unsafe scenario that I cannot reconstruct with more reconstruct with more handles. You, you, you are placed off heap, right? That's That's the point you're making. Yeah, but you can do that with more handles. And exactly. Well, how is but, but give you a ray? Uh, but off heap is not the only use case for for unsafe. No, but I mean, you can do arbitrary peak and poke with more handling and set it up correctly. The security resides in the MetaHandles lookup instead, which is, is, is a much better way of doing it than yeah, put arbitrary stuff in the boot platform. Yeah, here's a good but, question. But what, uh, sorry, but what are more handles? More, more handles. Uh, if, 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 you're, if you're here and haven't Googled it, you have too little information to be here. War handles is, <laughs> is like method handles, but for arbitrary memory. So it's an abstraction yes. of what unsafe does with peaks and pokes and um, atomicity and uh, references. Um, the same way that the method handle uh, abstracts an underlying method. Um, so Paul Sanders is, is the lead on that and has given the presentations that are both the JVMLS last year, uh, telling us how we go about implementing it, and there are various resources on the web showing how we do the various unsafe things using the bar handle mechanism that will come alive first in Java 9. So, Alexei, maybe we can pick up some of your use cases. There of are definitely course. more use cases than random peek and poke into memory. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, uh, this, this, that's a little toolkit online. Yeah. There's a little cookbook online already. But, <laughs> but we still need so, a migration path. You, you don't, I don't even know what you mean when you say migration path. You Define. Need a, you need a way for people to move from where oh. they were to, with, to where they need to be without having to swallow an elephant. What, what, can, what can I do but give you time and flag? I mean, that's what Oracle is giving you. You can run on sleep in Java 9 with a flag while you, while you recompile your apps. Yes. But as I said, it will be a default flag because people don't know if they use unsafe or not, and there's a high chance they do. Somewhere, some, somehow, somewhere in their uh, dependencies. And, and unsafe is only like the biggest symptom because it really is affecting yes. a lot of frameworks, so it's the most visible one. There's going to be a lot of other things that people are using yep. that are suddenly going to disappear and start breaking things. Yep. Now, the, the, the fear, you know, so should they have been using it? You know, that's one debate we can have, right? Setting aside that if they should or shouldn't, the fact is, they are, um, and sometimes there's no other way to get things done than the way that they've done it, which means that you need safe alternatives to whatever's, whatever's being used. That needs to be available while the old stuff is still available for some period of time before you start locking down the old stuff and taking it away. You get between 9 and 10 to, uh, to have those alternatives. I don't see the problem. But by, like three by years. the way, about bar handles, there's one question that that I'm looking forward to, maybe you know the answer. Is Stackley going to redesign his 
his collections based on bar handles because if he doesn't do it, there is no chance that yeah, other people. Well, it's inside, inside, inside the JDK, JDK, we don't care. Probably want to pay right. for it. But why? But why? He he would be the only person to prove yes. it's fast enough. Some and if he doesn't do that, it. nobody will. Why, why would he be the only person to prove it's fast enough? I mean, there are lots of people working around because the clock to do more. Do you, do you right know now. the sentence "eat your own dog food"? <laughs> well, they are. Like the, half the language team is using this in Valhalla, so there's certainly a lot of dog okay. food going on. And you, it's your responsibility too to check out if your stuff works in the subtlety world. Record it. Sure. It's the open JDK. Pull, pull it now and use a bar handle. See if it can do what you want. See if it's fast enough. I know because of various C2 issues that the uh, the internal representation of the bar handle didn't inline very well at first. So that's one of the things Paul is well, looking at. Well, we had this problem with method handle as well. So yes, it, uh, it is that because it was a completely brain that way of implementing. Yeah, but, but, but um, what made bar handles really fast, or what made Invoke Dynamic really fast? It was the JavaScript implementation, right? You worked on what? Mm. It was well, it well yes. Uh, yeah, that right. was a simple pullback of that. And uh, but we're actually we're using more handles internally in nine as well. The Valhalla project has migrated okay. a lot of things in a long time. But uh, um, I, I really can't tell you more. It seems to work fairly well. And uh, it's a political decision that that internal APIs will be uh, rendered accessible with uh, like the migration path being this flag you can still use on safety nine. And uh, there's a difference between political and technical decisions. If you could ignore politics altogether, I think it's really great that we get rid of arbitrary picking and poking in Java and introduce an existing security model which is already there if we invoke dynamic. Um, so, I mean, so what you so what you're saying is that the people who write the JDK code don't have to follow the same rules as everybody else. No, that's why some misc unsafe exists. We can use it internally because we are the JDK. Write your own JVM if you're jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's an internal class in the JVM. It was never supposed to be able to expose it from the beginning. Yeah. And we use that because we use several other intrinsics. We intrinsify things in the, in, the, in the JVM because we are JVM and know this class. That's all the security model that it works. I mean, we know what's in the stack because it's JDK. We give ourselves privileges all the time because we are the implementation. The same I'm, way as I'm the not saying that user defined intrinsics would be nice. I'm not going that way. <laughs> but, uh, okay, but uh, we, we are working on it for time. Yeah, I hope so. But I just wanted to mention it. We are working on that for 10. It's going to be part of the metal hand package and the, the earliest alpha that I've seen that you can sort of um, specify a user-made intrinsic and have it compile fast. I mean, I was talking to John Rose about that just a month ago, so. So we can we just skip nine? <laughs> sure. What's, what's going to happen? It's up to you. That's what happened at five. Hmm? That's what happened at five, everyone skipped it. <laughs> So, so as far as I can tell, like technically, we have we have the solutions you need right now uh, with a few glitches. The six months left to FC, so I can deliver something that works. And we also have the bridge gap yeah, with unsafe, so re-enabling unsafe. But I mean, the JVM does all kinds of internal things. You can't claim to want to use the same JVM mechanisms. I mean, that would be un un insecure. I mean, would you want to call every method in the JVM DLL library as well? I mean, what, what do you want? It, it is an abstraction layer for a reason. This is the Java sandbox. Things yeah. that are useful, because to, for me, I've observed in some tank because of business reasons. So I, I've worked in the more extremes of performance, and people would typically have gone to C or C++. And using the likes of Unsafe has given a route whereby people can stay on Java and take a lot of the other benefits that Java brings, mm -hmm. but use that. And personally, I'd love to use four handles or anything. If, if those were there yeah. a while ago, I would use them if they did everything I need. It, the thing is, it's, it's how we get the specs out so that the things that people actually need get built. And I, I can think of various other things, like with really simple things. You're running applications, you want to control and see them. Signal handling is hidden inside this. But I haven't seen any proposal to make these sorts of things external. But real things for building real world server applications that aren't just running inside a J2E container. Otherwise, we can compete with C, C++, Go, other languages. And we need to just have the business things in place. Now, how, what mechanisms we use is kind of interesting. And that's, that's what's going to make this a success or failure. Because you're going to be talking to a business person for why you should upgrade different JDKs. There's going to be a cost to that. They want to know what they're getting and what's the migration path for that. And they're asking all the questions like, well, why don't we do this in C++ anyway if this is the issue? Yeah, I think Peter had uh, last year got the question why high frequency trading anyways is using Java and I think you had a fairly nice answer because the, the, um, the Java environment is easy to understand, it's, it's very maintainable code but you can also make it fast using tricks like some is gun safe. 
and the, the other option would be to move to C++, which makes... Why do you think the war handles will be equally fast? No, I, I don't say that. I haven't tested it yet. I was surprised when I, when I like, two days ago, saw the, the, um, the uh, Jap to be tar proposed to target, and then Jeremy raised a fairly nice question. How does that one is going to propose to target when the memory model update, which it uh, depends on, is not yet proposed to target? How that does how uh, does that work? I, I think that they will be dependent on each other. Uh, right now, we're uh, they're working out various dependency chains for nine still. So I, I I'll sure think they're in there. But it looks fair, fairly weird, right? If you have a dependent Jap and this is not proposed to target, but the as a question the list, someone will ask you quickly. Our primary use of unsafe is entirely on native memory. Yeah, um, yeah sure. Bar handles. Okay. You can use bar handles for all Yeah, you can use bar handles for that. That's the main idea. There's a few other things. The fences. The, there's a lot of yeah. algorithms you cannot implement well, on free with, without the fences because yeah. the memory model is not sufficient. Yeah, because we need the. If you'll have fences. And your memory model will also ex uh, uh, export things that would give you. Uh, so some Java controller with fencing. So that, I mean, the, the entire key here is like Java. When we we want the security model that works, we 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 are reluctant when people put things in the boot class path and complain when their systems are compromised. Yeah. So and then you bitch at us because you put system in the boot class path and things are compromised. So we're giving you a security model that's the same as the invoke dynamic security model with lookups, and you can still do the unsafe things. How can this be bad? It takes 10 minutes for you to rewrite your unsafe access to use more handles with a finished API, recompile your product, deploy your production. That's, uh, that's How many people are going to update that? That assumption is incorrect. Why? Even if they go Java 9, they're not going to update it. Let's put D, that's still use unsafe and rerun your program at 9, or stay on 8. I mean, wh wh why is that so horrible and infeasible? These are three very simple paths you can use. Um, Software changes. I mean, keep running Java 1 4 if you don't want generics. That's fine. <laughs> you, you obviously didn't work. <laughs> that is bullshit. That is a bullshit thing to say. I work in so many real production environments and we've done horrible swapping. Why would you say that? You don't know that's all my background. I mean, well, but, uh, just by the way thing. you're talking about, you're not considering the, uh, the planning uh, and all of the other costs that go into actually upgrading an application from where it is now to where... I'll, I'll migrate to Java made. versions, like major Java versions and release systems, and I had to change and I had to recompile and I had to plan. So not something you do overnight, but you can certainly have a migration plan. We're running two, we've been running two parallel clusters of 500 services, one the old JVM, one the new JVM, I think it was 1.4 to 1.5. And um, I mean, these, these things, I've, I've successfully done these things, that's all I can say. So, um, for example, looking at this document, there's one obvious, very, very big use case, which is fast civilization <coughs> because you skip the constructors. You can't do that yet, right? You can't do that yet. Uh, okay. I, would, I would actually talk to Paul about that because I know it's been discussed. Uh, I'm not on the, the uh, that's, I'm not on the internal list anymore where, where this is discussed. <laughs> and I would but encourage why, I would why encourage are those to bring this up. Discussed internally. This is the main question. Uh, another problem today. Because there are security <laughs> issues and security issues need to be secret. No, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> they don't. Well the people like you never update the DVM because it's not that big. Please don't stop on this. I mean a lot a lot of this will I don't, I don't work for Oracle anymore, but a lot of this is moving out into daylight right now. So. Those are obvious security reasons. I totally agree, but this is the reason why they shouldn't be kept secret. Yes, but... It's different for, for, for uh, zero-day exploits or something. Yep. I would agree on that, but not for unsafe. Yep. But the Oracle corporate policy, which I want to take up with Larry Allison, is that anything security-sensitive is work for company confidential and until we are safe to release that information. That, that decision is made at CEO level. This is level. not how open source works, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, this is obviously working against the idea of the OpenJDK. Talk to Larry, I agree. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> get, get, I get hate the only security in Oracle. You should talk to him. Yeah. I'll tell him. But they do that the same. They do that for 120,000 employees with the DB, with everything. That's how security is handled in Oracle. And it involves lawyers if something goes bad. So. We, we are doing our best to serve the community and at, at the same time give you, like, not remove any functionality. And, um, or, uh, I mean, Oracle is, I'm not an Oracle anymore, but uh, I feel it's, it's quite unfair given that how much we have communicated, that we talked about the more analysts for three years, we're actually on open list, want the community input, and uh, we're not gonna, like, act unsafe in 24 hours because we'll, remain, we'll retain the mechanism in well, mind, things like that. I, I think the, 
the, the bar handles are not fair to put into a real discussion because the whole discussion started right before bar handles were proposed in Java 9. Okay. It was obvious that they're not going to. And that's why I was surpri surprised when it was pro proposed to Target just a couple of days ago. It was like, wow, this is really going okay. to be in Java 9? Yeah, I've known this for quite a while, but haven't been able to, to tell that because I didn't know which way the jet would go. And that's right? the problem. With the, well, you see, yeah. that's the problem. This is where the whole yeah. discussion started. You know, and a, and so a lot it's of an Oracle is made problem. It's a homemade problem of Oracle. And they blame people for blaming them, for not being open enough, or how do you want to say that? You're, you're not working for Oracle anymore, so you can be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can say that security guidelines rule supreme. Anything security sensitive, anything that can be interpreted as security sensitive, anything that even crash non-public builds is sensitive. And I mean, that, that goes up to Larry. What can I say? That's the Oracle does it. It's not just security. I think it's, it's simple things. People, like in our jobs, we try to work around problems. We try to solve problems as quick as we can with the best possible solutions. Sometimes we go through processes we do or do not get answers for. I can give you a really good example that I use on Safe for a lot that's not in any of those documents or cannot be solved by VAR handle. Bugs in byte buffer that have <laughs> not been what bugs, buffer? There's some bugs in byte buffer that have not been fixed in over 10 years. And okay. you can work around them with on Safe. Now it's nothing to do with VAR handles, it's to do with an API that you get no attention and no love. Okay. And, we, and so you, how do we get to the point so to drop some of the unsafe usage is if some of these things get fixed, people wouldn't you work around them so and then you wouldn't adopt unsafe. Let me guess. Have, have, have you brought this up on the mailing list that this is a, a major issue for you? Have you report, had some report as a bug? I've had discussions with people who have been involved and they've even tried to push some of the bugs through. So I've talked to Stuart Marks, uh, Richard Warburton, Paul Sandor, so, mm -hmm. and they agree with me that says getting these things prioritized is a complete nightmare. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, but that's actually the cause of a lot of the problem behind so, this. So pe people are doing this out of their own. I'm as frustrated having to use it as anyone else. I don't want to. I would yeah, want to, I would want to use the right FBI on my yep. buffer, but I just can't do that. Like, yep. That's the way to fix it. The, having VAR handles is great. It's going to be another step in the right direction. But if we can pick up the pace of fixing these things that cause people to work around, mm -hmm. That's what that's what would stop the take up of it. Would you have time to submit code fixes for these kinds of problems? Yes. Because uh, we would take them. Yeah, I, I've worked with so like Richard has put forward a number of code fixes and they've kind of been lying machine. Alexi has sort of come back and says, well you need to push harder and keep keep pushing, keep pushing. Yeah, we'll someone pushing. someone with, that's the problem with Oracle, it's someone within the org it needs to be able to, to better take these things. I the things that have been given to me from the outside world, I've, I've been tracking them in Jira. Some of them have been on confidential nature because security, and some not. And um, and and uh, since, since I, I believe that the migration plan of Jira is to make it even more open, and uh, it's still not happened yet. It's another community question, another political sure. thing. But we definitely need that the Oracle definitely needs to get better at at um, driving fixes and and like establishing dependency and importance yeah. of fixes from the community. But when it comes to a major refits like VAR handles, uh, dependencies like what you see, like yeah, you could classify as a dependency, are looked at and are prioritized. So you just need to yell and yell. I mean, well, I'm, I don't, that's, that's, that is what it's like, but uh, you need to get someone to put it as a P2, put it dependent on the VAR handle branch, and then it will be fixed in line. Yeah, well, hopefully we can. I think there's subtleties as well. Like I've observed a number of problems where NIO and Java Lang, because of the interdependencies, it really, Lang needs to know more about NIO and vice versa, but they're in separate packages, and this causes a lot yes. of problems. And you end up working around them with unsafe because you can deliberately mess with them. Yeah. And it's always more problematic with open APIs because they take time, require gems, and require processes and yes. stuff. And uh, when it comes to things like Lambda Forms and Hotspot, I, I could sit down for, for six months and like, replace them with something else, and no one would, no one would have anything to say. So, Yes, it's, 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 that's also the problem with the open source project. Change a public API takes time. I worked with Zen when it was very early, uh, like, and the people in, in Cambridge would, uh, oh, it's a new point release, I've renamed all the APIs. Nah. You can't do that with Java. <laughs> no. So it, it has to it be slightly to it. So like, I've got a, a particular implementation of a buffer that you can wrap an array, you can wrap a byte buffer, a direct byte buffer, a map byte buffer, a uh, general off heap address things. You can deal with the whole thing generically. Yes. Like that's spread like wildfire in some of my clients because the, the, the usability of it. Mm. Whereas if they try dealing with 
So, so say they're on 32-bit and all of a sudden the, the alignment's different off their res, they get different performance issues on copying, and, or they yep. get all sorts of... So people just, okay, we take this and it just works. This is the reason people take this stuff, not to be awkward. In, 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 my, in my opinion, we would need a JSR that is like high-speed, native-like performance Java through these kinds of mechanisms in a security-safe way, yeah. and that would have to involve representatives from many places and so I mean you would be an ideal person to sit on that committee because uh, you have seen everything in, in, in production related to things so four hundred is, is one detail but we only need to go, go up one abstraction layer and try to create the JSR for uh, for fast scalable uh, high-speed Java. Yeah. yeah the other thing is that uh, we can talk about what uh, people actually use and find useful and really makes a difference because one of the problems I guess is that they, people might have the view that, oh yes, we could do all these things, but you know, would it really make a difference? Would, is it something useful? Because um, sometimes when people play with things and um, they they get attached to it, and it's not something they really use. But, uh, or, but then, um, okay, you might feel um, less sympathetic if that gets taken away. But in that case, we, we, we actually can talk about real use cases, real differences. That it, you know, why why is it done that way? can argue those things, because uh, you're smart when you're talking, because you don't exactly the same thing. So. Yeah, but yeah. In, if anybody's ever worked in high frequency trading, the one thing you learn very quickly is you don't get emotionally attached to anything, because if you do, you lose money and you're out of a job. Yeah. So everything is just like, look, you learn something new tomorrow, you apply it and forget what you've done in the past, and so you just, that emotional baggage just has to go. It comes up with really nice, elegant solutions, but it's a very different political world. And when you see that in the corporate world, people get so attached to solutions <laughs> that really, it takes a long time for them to turn and change. And, and there's also dependencies, because as Kirk pointed out, you can't migrate applications easy as much as... No, it's not easy, but it's, it's also easy. not impossible. I mean, no, I've, 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 I've jumped Java versions with relative ease from three to four in production with like a thousand node system incrementally uh, over a period of months. But it, it wasn't easy, but it, like, give it a plan, it worked. And there were API changes, and there were recompilations needed, and there were all these kinds of things. But it's not, I mean, it's, it, I, I think it's painted out as like completely impossible when you don't say forever, that's the wrong, no, wrong thing to say. I don't and think anyone can say lot, A lot of people say that because I don't want to recompile from my, my application, my third party <laughs> library is completed, then they, they're, they're like, were given to me by some guy in Italy in 95, uh, things like that. So, I mean, there's got to be trouble. Uh, when, yeah, when you bring it, when you unpublish an IPI. I think that's more from the user. They and we also never so deprecated anything flag deprecated, and that's going to start soon as well, if I if I know my article correctly. And and that will, I mean, people were using, I've seen new code using thread stuff in 2010. So, I mean, yeah, people, people do that, and then they bitch when thread stuff stops working. I mean, it's... <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I have a question for the Oracle or X Oracle guys, yeah. and which is how the uh, issues that gets filed into Jira gets prioritized, uh, especially regarding performance, because I have a feeling that, you know, Java ecosystem is seen as, uh, oh, uh, you know, we're deploying stuff into WebSphere, it's going to be slow anyway, um, you know, we don't care about these two guys that are actually working on high frequency <coughs> trading. No, it, uh, it's not two guys, guys, when it comes to unsafe and replacement of warhands, we know it's pretty much the entire world, so. Those things, I understand that. those things I've seen in this area, they get folded in under the Warhound project, project and the performance project. So I've, I've, I've seen them being triaged and processed. They have fairly high priority and they're linked to nine. So if, if the, the main release block of the nine was Jigsaw, it, it cost us six months. And um, I, I think we'll be able to meet that deadline with FC in January. And uh, I'm, I'm not, it depends on the sub project that, that CRs come in as. Uh, but. Uh, I, so I think this is fairly important as it's so big and fixed. Right, so how does stuff go into this team? It's like how, how we can say, well, this is like a you know a simple enough fix that has a big performance impact, go to the performance team and you know get it in. The groups prioritize their issues uh, with their, their product owner uh, when they come in. So they're assigned a release and uh, a status and a product. But they have their own benchmarks, like they never look at that because it's not in the benchmark. They say, well, you know, we do this change, but the benchmark, you know, don't show any direction. Yes, uh, so that's why we appreciate any third party code that can be can be given as well, because that has been extremely helpful, for instance, uh, implementing Nightburn, <coughs> having the performance we have there. 
would not have been possible if we had been given frequently been given external code to test. So and I know that for high frequency shops and stuff, it's incredibly secret and and, and guarded. But uh, that that anything that's given to us or given to Oracle will be run as benchmarks. Some of them are even integrated, like some some Apache stuff that has been given us, or with Apache license, has been integrated in the benchmark suite. So you know, the more code, the better. It's very hard to to like see all the use cases that exist without. So if you can break scale down something that is unsafe, and this sucks, and bar handles 20% less, even though it's a thousand lines of code, uh, people will look at it. Because it's easier to look at it with the, with the input. If you get like, most of the web IDs we get is like, Minecraft crashed when I was not in the room. Yeah, uh, yeah they get closed. So don't follow bug reports like that. I think it, it's difficult if you're coming towards the process. So like, so for example, I go talk to Paul. I can have a great conversation and yeah. he'll kind of explore the problem and he'll give me real advice or go talk to Stuart or Rich or some of those guys. And if you try to generically approach the organization to get something done, that's a very different I would mail, experience. I would, I would email these individuals CCing the appropriate uh, OpenJDK list. That's usually how I start a conversation. That's, mm -hmm. that's how our customers from Nasrin talk to us on the Nasrin dev list. Yeah, because like Peter and I tried to do some work just over a year ago, and we basically got the finger from Mark. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that happened. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Which was like, so we come along with we want to put in our effort and time to really try and help us because like we don't want to use unsafe. We don't want to do a number of different things, and we can sort of point out better ways of doing stuff. But whenever you're told that sought off because you're not an open jetty can't commit or, well, the technique is good. We write our own replacements and then use that. Have you have you signed OCAs? You can author code, please. <laughs> have you read some of those in detail? Yeah, I have. The thing is, I'm not sure. Yeah, but you 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 get someone to sponsor your changes first, and I mean, that's I, right. and and that, that's that's a real pity. But it's eight changes that that like fairly simple, and then you are a, a committer. Mm -hmm. And I think that it has been really. A lot of friction for third parties outside Oracle to, to gain committer status for various political reasons. I don't know. It's been really slow. Um, but on the other hand, we don't also get a lot of fixes from third parties. It's wonderful when I get a diff and we look at it and find this is great and give someone like sign the OCA and we can give you committer credit or author credit for this change. And, and we'd like to see so much more of that. And I don't think that we will be a healthy open JDK project until like third party contributions work flawlessly that way. I'm a private entity now. I have my I've signed my OCA, so I will continue submitting code to the various things that I'm I'm, I'm committer and, and reviewer to uh, using that. So, but but, uh, but I mean Martin's problem is something that that is coming up quite often. So you see that people will uh, commit submit patches for one thing or the other. I mean the parallelization uh, of some of the garbage collection yes. that's, that's being done now has been languishing uh, in. You know, for years where we were trying to get like a sponsor and everything. Well, I, I don't understand why it takes so much time. That's, that's, I don't think it's, it's acceptable right now. Why it takes so much time? Right. I think the best way to do a major uh, contribution to something would to be do it in a new JSR with a team that's represented uh, both of the implement clouds that are going in Oracle, in both dynamic, for instance, IBM contributed code there. It's part of there. I'm not sure how much of it's left, but oh. I think the JSR is the only working model right now to do such a thing because there's so many patches that are just languishing and languishing. I don't know why. We've successfully vacuumed up all our, all our lang tools, uh, things that were in the wild, I think you might be seeing too much, but we've actually, during the spring, we've, we've been able to pick up a lot of third party stuff. And when it comes to things like GC, that's moving so damn fast right now and so many changes, so the things are getting outdated already, which is right. a big problem. So, so that, that's, that, that could also be a reason this doesn't fit. Or someone has implemented this and it only works in the serial collector. Yeah, well, we're not going to maintain that. And we don't have time to, to implement for the other collector. So that's, yeah. that's a lot of the third party stuff gets languishing because of reasons like that. I think if the, you can help champion things through, because they wouldn't have a discussion on the job champions at some stage. Cause yeah, I, th I, think th I think there's actually a community thing that needs to be looked into, yeah. third party contributions. And I, I, I totally agree with you that it's, it's, uh, it's right, not right now, it's about 
because if you deal with any of the evangelists, you, the standard response you get is post to the, the mailing list, mm -hmm. right. which yeah. is actually very unhelpful. Yeah, you need to sell it. Right, right yeah. now, you need to sell it to an individual or individuals within Oracle yeah. before yes. you post to the mailing list, and that's that's too bad. Yeah. That's if you look at other is. successful software organizations, if they've got evangelists and people out in the field, they're listening to the field and they're helping each other yeah. in the ideas. It feels like, dude, you must come and. Well, the OpenJDK still doesn't feel like a real open source project no, to me. No. It's something Sun was forced to do because they had competition. Yeah. yeah you can read the code. Yeah. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I, I certainly agree with the position where you don't really, you don't want it to have everyone have commit status in the project. So, so it does need to be gated to a certain level. I think right now what we're just talking at the, the level of gating is seems to be uh, yeah we have a very very aggressive and we also have a lot of resource pro like low resources because the mine is taking a lot of time sure. everyone's working on jigsaw so it makes it even harder to pick things up but you know, the idea the typical thing is that Google submits GC code and it's ugly as hell and it works on CMS only and we tell them that and then they, mm, they wouldn't take our code mm, and they go bitching so that's typically a lot of third-party code it's like that and, and we, can you like support this. No, we use this internally, it works fine for us. Okay, we'll do that on your JVM fork, because we can't take it in like this, and we don't have the man hours to put in to clean this up or make it work on all collectors. So, sadly enough, I mean, most of the third-party stuff tends to be very specific for the purpose of the third-party connector, and we can't do that with the JVMs. We sort of have to have generic solutions. We can't bring in every third-party solution that tweaks CMS a little bit, because that would be, I mean, Hotspot code is already horrible. It would be even worse. I think maybe there's a perception that hyperkitty is a specific case. Well, high speed Java is not. Like, Maya was the original high speed Java yeah. thing, and that turned out to look like Solaris because Solaris is <laughs> So, uh, but, but I think I, I would love to see a JSR with these issues because it's so much bigger. And if you look at people, if you get like Doug Lee, he basically seamlessly checks in and reviews stuff in the JDK, and I think. The goal for us all third party committers is to be like him and get his status. And he's uh, achieved it. And I mean, it can be possible, but you have to fight your own. Even Doug thinks this day. I've known Doug for a long time. And he's like, doing back in one five days is very different from now. Yeah. He doesn't just do that anymore at all. But you still see code. I mean, just an example, but I, I don't, I'm not aware of any prolific third party committer that's working on the same status as the internal JVM teams. And that's a problem. Yeah. I think that's probably get out on GitHub and take pull requests. Yeah. And, and usually the problem is for people in the sol solving their specific issues and say, now take this into the JVM. Um, it would be so easy just to put pull requests and put benchmarks and everything that could be evaluated and could be cleaned up as part of the acceptance yeah. process. Yeah. That'd be easier. Yeah, I think there is one more problem about being open. I mean, you said you agree it's not a real open source project, <laughs> at least not yet. And I think uh, one more point to, to show that is that there's, beside Jigsaw, pretty much no JSR for Java 9 yet. So even as JCP member, you have still just no. the rough idea what is going yes, to be Java actually, 9. That's actually quite confusing to me as well. It's like, yeah, it's, it's a big issue. And the other, the other question is, how does the Jeff thing work with the JSR thing? Because It doesn't really work. They, no, they don't they really don't connect it in a meaningful yes. way. Yeah, exactly. This is, this is means the biggest issue. Yeah, so you know, you really have this uh, a bunch of things that really should be under the umbrella of a JSR showing up as a very dis disjoint set of JAPs that are coming in from. Yeah, a little bit unclear in which, which end start pulling to, to solve that. I'm not sure even who would like the pin I guess it's more. Uh, um, I could take yeah, you a question. <laughs> 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 Again, our <laughs> But what, what, what I do, or what our team has done in, in the language team is that third party fixes that are like a dip this big and they're easy to understand and look great, they get integrated in weeks, mm -hmm. days sometimes. So it's, it's the whole I wrote my own subsystem thing that's, that still doesn't really fit into the open source model. And we can't take in any specific, like any Google specific CMS tweak that, that only is good for their application. It's, it's, if we add complexity, it has to be good for something. But I recognize that high-speed Java, in, in, in your HTT terms, would be one of the general good things that would certainly work as JSR. Yeah. So well, actually having reviewed the Google and SAP code that was trying to be checked into CMS, I didn't actually see that big an issue with it. It seemed to me like the, the bigger issue is just Oracle unwillingness to take on the code. No, so the GC guy spent two weeks analyzing and looking at it and said it's not 
quality enough, and uh, we fixed this, this, and this little so specific list of things. So okay. So that, that was, a, that's was a good to go with that. But that's part of the process then, isn't it? Yeah, but so then they, they said, no, oh, that's too much work. It works for us, and we have our JVM for it. So and then it fell to the ground. So we never got back any of, at least when I left, they, they hadn't, that's, they gave up. That's unfortunate. Yeah. And <laughs> same with Shenandoah. They, I mean, they have this huge garbage collector that they went in, and who will support it? Um, don't worry, it's never going to work. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you see what we have to deal with. I mean, G1 got in two years before it was production ready, and then we had to, like, square the uh, test matrix it's, again. It still doesn't work, so. <laughs> well, it's default. 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 Yeah, but it's going to be, yeah, it doesn't work, and it's default. So. <laughs> yeah, so our work default collector is our, well, mm, yeah, I guess there's degrees of not working, isn't it? <laughs> that's the hard stuff, but it would be the simple stuff, like just changing some of the Java code that's in libraries. Mm -hmm. but yeah, at, yeah, at yeah, least, I can only speak for the language team, but simple readable fixes from the world, they, they get integrated in days to weeks. Because mm -hmm. I, I think some of the things you're bitching about are small enough that you can contain enough that, like, through the LCJ, you could probably get those things pushed through fairly quickly. We've tried on a few. Google's also sitting on like hundreds of security bugs that they've discovered and refused to share with us. So it's, it's wonderful to know that there's awesome. things out there, there's zero days out there that we haven't found. That's what happens when you see your friends, isn't it? <laughs> 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 it's a million dollars a year for a Java license, and it would never have been an issue. <laughs> How many millions have you spent now? <laughs> That's also their internal devices set. Okay. Get the Java license, it's really cheap. They didn't. <laughs> I guess. So that's it. I, my homework is to look at uh, more on this presentation, so I especially recommend the one Paul Sanders did last year at JVLS. I voted it for best presentation in came for second place. So what uh, version of Java can we actually use for Amazon? Uh, you can get the line built and the uh, the Yeah. Yeah, just, just HD Cloud with the JDK 9 from the JDK <coughs> there. Uh, I'm not sure of the stability. It changes like weekly by weekly. It's just stability if you just change a little bit right now. But uh, you, can, you can try it out. And Paul will be able to point you in the right direction if you, uh, if you post on the Coral Lips list or the MLVM list uh, or one of the list of Paul, Paul hangs around. We will. There's, there's an entire resource library and it's actually a presentation on the actual Oracle site, a, a PDF that introduces to our handles as well. And if you want to get into the meaty details on the performance details and measurements, JV won us last year, and uh, Google's handles and more handles, and you find various things, various places that we talk about it. I think the last time I talked to Paul, there was one restriction with it, which I think is a major problem for all feet, is the bar handle is not going to be as performant if it moves. So it's not going to, if it's, if it's to fix the address, it's pretty good, but if it needs to track a mobile address, mm -hmm. it can't be optimized as well. Yes, I, the, 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 main, the main pain point here is what C2 can do with Warhammer code. Mm -hmm. And C2 is, is a weak, crazy JIT when it comes to certain optimal sequences. It's a slow JIT and it's, it's not very good at it, like doing the correct <laughs> inlining decisions. So when, jo when Invoke Dynamic got Lambda forms internally, uh, I probably spent a man year working with the performance team and the compiler team just to get C2 to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And the reason Lambda Forms came in there in the first place was that no one wants to splice in IR in C2's IR because the sea of nodes representation is really bad at these kinds of things that are, are very obviously and easy to do in LLVM. So, so, so yes, uh, just that this class overhead bumped up that came in with Evoke Dynamic because we weave a lot of byte code on the surface, like needing to installation overhead and even more startup overhead. I, I would not design it like that. In JROP, we implemented Invoke Dynamic, just splicing in the call site, inlining it, and, and the JIT handle will rest. That's, that's, why, uh, that's why IBM has always been better at this stuff. Yeah, IBM is actually, uh, J9 is a really good, really good optimization engine. Yeah. And um, it's really hard to work with C2 and get, to, and, and only a few people, you know, and you need to work a man year on C2 to basically have a feeling for what to change where. And that's beyond Java 10, I guess, is going to swapped out, but I'm not sure like what new architecture will look like whether it will be Java or not, it's leading towards Java JIT, but then it has to cheat in certain ways to get a small enough footprint. Yeah. I think that that will be one of the restrictions when people not adopting bar handles off heap, because a lot of the problems you do have to move the address a lot. Like if you do an IPC, you're chasing all the time. I think that's exactly why I think we need a JSR for this. We need to come like discuss use cases on a dedicated mailing list and say this is an off heap use case that is slow, this is an off heap, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. yes.
I'm still unhappy with Invoke Dynamic Performance when it comes to certain call sites. I, I think Warhammer is not going to be symptom free, but uh, if you have a specific HFT system, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can tweak your Java code so that it optimizes in lines correctly, but it's going to be another minor headache, right? This is legit. Yeah. But at least you have a consistent security model, and that takes precedence over everything. Yeah, I think that's what helps. It, it, it does not do wonders when we have Java exploits. It is, no one is happy about that, yeah. and it overrides everything else. So now we have the invoke dynamic, we call a sensitive thing, and, and, and that security model method handle lookups. And it will be a major win security wise and architecture wise, we will use the same lookup mechanism and, and, and access mechanism for war handles. Mm -hmm. And it would not have to deploy with everything in the root class path. I mean, it's your server, so it probably doesn't matter in HFT, but I, I feel nervous every time I have to. Yeah. I think IPC is becoming such a prevalent thing now, I think. Because as we're getting bigger and bigger machines and more and more cores. Yeah. Communicating via the local network is just not on, and now people are having the IPC. And Java is going to become isolated from the rest of the world if yep. it shuts that off. You can see people doing it a lot. Like in the C world, it's incredibly common now. It's become very common in C Sharp's world. And it does work in Java if you use on C. So yep. I mean, people are going to be stuck with that unless it's addressed. Because the, the other problem we're probably going to see people forking and, and uh, doing their own peaks and hopes. If they don't want to adapt, or if it's too slow, or if they can't help it, and but I mean that's perfectly legal, but it's not necessarily a good thing. So we have to make more homes work fast. That's, that's already that's already happening. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, the, the main issue I see uh, is is compiler quality of of, of of compiled code, and I hope that it will be good enough. Yeah. Certainly, we'll give it time. But I think having a backboard. I think what? Having, having a backboard and just for unsafe in Java eight. Oh yeah. 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 That would be exceptional. <laughs> what I don't really, yeah, one thing I don't really understand, if you look at .NET and Python and most of the other, well, almost all of the other VM languages have kind of unsafe areas, critical areas to do those things. I don't really get the idea why Java needs to be different in this case. Yeah, even if you go to older VM technology. You also get a nice security Java. benefit because you have to have this special area where you can do those things. So you, you minimize the scope where it is possible. It's a very old architectural decision about the, how the Java sandbox and security model should look. I don't really I mean it's, it's traditional and, and it's turned out to be a, a, a pretty good thing uh, security wise. Um, the problem, I think also with, with Project Panama, which will be after Java 9, and will live say Java 10, uh, you'll have fast function interfaces and this will yeah. enable you to write extremely fast native code. Yeah, well, they will actually used to be inline into the VM doing the peaks and pokes you want. So you can customize anything and, and, and you can marshal, I mean, the best case for a function interface call, you marshal a parameter somewhere, you inline the native code because you can understand that it's part of the Java method and no save points here, and then, then it will run. So, so the future will give you a lot more possibility to do the ugly horrible stuff that you want to be able to run fast. Yeah. Although it would be nice if you could just do that in Java. Yeah, rather than having to write native. Yeah, uh, hopefully the Warhammers will, will cover 99% of the use cases. That's the architectural background. Uh, yeah. I think they need to be combined <laughs> with, call it effectively final for the sake of argument. Because one of the biggest issues when you chase any sort of memory is doing data dependent loads. The processor cannot speculate past the data dependent load. And yes. usually you want the address, yes. something to be looked up. Now, you, you can sort of write a buffer and you can use unsafe and go for it in the and most people go reasonably fast, but if you look at it native to C code, it's still not, not even anywhere near as fast. Because I'm usually competing directly against C code as well. So and I had a thesis guy who did inline and native code in our old JVM day rocket because we could decompile the entire x86 so we could inline arbitrary native code given that it had a, a no safe points region where it was running. Mm -hmm. And that was native fast. Well, you can do it in Java, but you have to know too much about how C2 works. Like for example, the, the address that you're going to go to, don't store it as a field inside a normal, as a member of a, uh, an instance. Yeah. If you store it in a public static final in the class, that will then be treated as a constant and it will go into the constant in the generator yeah. code and you won't get a data. Right, right now it's, uh, it's, it's definitely not working. Like We don't have a solution like that in the VM in Hotspot today. And, and, and yes, that would be nice. And so things like that, I'm just like, really, this is fine. <laughs> Please really treat this as a Yeah, well, I was actually the one of the most, most disgusting moments implementing the Java standard when I was outside Sun at BEA and found out the finals words. That, that's one of my most WTF moments in my career.
to so maybe make a proposal for a, st a public static final fund, or, uh, <laughs> which is a constant. <laughs> I think it's using method handles. You can't there are files that you can sort of write to sometimes and sort of showing up now, so it's a beautiful way of looking. <laughs> Anyone here going to JVMLS? In, uh, Sir? Anyone going to the Java Language Summit in Santa Clara in a, in a few weeks? No. That's a shame because this is going yeah, to be one of the last topics. It, it can't make it a certain. Anybody wants to discuss with Alex who's on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes. <laughs> Current for Alex implementation actually used on sleep undercover already since Alex. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another comment that says that the city already deals well with uh, well, Alexei, I've seen CPU use cases that don't work so well, but a lot of optimization, as you say, has gone into it, and uh, I think that that will be decent replacement for a lot of scenarios when uh, <laughs> yeah. nine finally ships. We can't see his face. Though. Do we, have, we need to bring Alexei up? On yeah, bring. Yeah, he's working. Oh, yeah. So we can see his face. Yeah. Yeah. He should have been here, by the way. Yeah, why is she here? Like, why not here? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Wasn't invited? So yes, I agree. It I would be nice to get the yes. uh, yeah. Java like yeah, summit. He couldn't, he couldn't make it. And I'm I'm um, I'm quite humble when I see how much work is in there. I I, ch I don't have time to check out the Warhounds like stuff every day, but I check it every two weeks. A lot of things have changed around, and uh, I, I see a lot of compiler work, and performance work there. Marcus, do you know how much? Warhandles come with actual unsafe. There are other use cases, other things like monitor, enter, exit, uh, back and handles, well. and other APIs that you just, you know, unsafe is just a mixture of everything. Yeah. So yeah. warhandles will obviously not cover the whole thing. The memory model changes will bring in some of those things as, as, uh, as APIs, if I remember correctly. And I, I'll yeah. have to refer to someone else, but uh, a lot of the, uh, the unsafe stuff that are needed, besides peaking and poking, will be migrated in, in, in the structured ways. Define class for like all mocking frameworks. Pass. <laughs> Stop mocking around. Be serious. Uh, I guess he will mock. He will mock me in a few minutes. Now I'm, I'm I'm more confident than I'm non confident about this. I've seen I've seen more of it internally than you have, and I I. I would be the first to complain that it's, it's very fuzzy outside Oracle, but I don't have the internal lists. I actually see a lot less of the world every day. So uh, I, I think a JSR uh, tackling this would be a great idea and uh, collecting new data and people from the industry. And um, I think that more, more handles are, are, are a very good start. Yes, totally agree. It's a little late for that, but uh, not a proper nine. No, actually, it's, it's, it's pretty well optimized already, so you know, I think a lot of useful stuff going on. I mean, for JSR. Yeah, for nine, yes. But this is not in the nine scope either. This will be, this will be lots of discussions going on. Yeah. And uh, but I, I don't think it can be done successfully without real-world cooperation and real-world examples. I don't think we know enough about the real world inside Oracle to handle all the high-performance scenarios. This may be coming to Belarus in the world. Yeah, possibly in the It's a huge task. So, so your, your opinion is download Java 9, early access build, trying to implement it and trying to benchmark it, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, Alexi just sent me a link to where to find it. Yeah, yeah, I already downloaded it. Tell us the result of the bits. First, try to compile the job. When you I pass that, then you can start building this one. So I haven't done any, any more handle performance runs since maybe late spring. So Alexi is the guy to talk to if you want to know how well it potentially fares. OK. Oh. He did some work last week. He posted on the GMH dev what he was doing last week. <laughs> two, two issues was, was actually optimizing more handles and, and looking for the use cases in situ. Not, not proper inline and other stuff. So actually, he's, he's working on that. Now we know. He just, he just posted an e email on the wrong list. And then he apologized immediately the next second. Sorry, guys, not for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I can see what he was working for. Like, oh, I see you. That's performance work for handles. So yeah, this, there, is, there is some more. 
I hope that, I mean, Paul or someone can do a V-jug about this. It would be very useful, I think. Oh, yeah. During the, the fall or the winter or something like that, when we have something looking like a final implementation with final performance. I'll actually email him about that. Just being known as theorists of war handles is a useful step forward for many people because there was worry that there was no alternative. Yeah. It was just like there's a flag for a while next to the future. There hasn't really been an official statement. Well, in, in the I, yeah, I think the official statement that is missing is VJSR. Because people look at the JCP and they're looking for alternative and there's just nothing. Yeah, well there's, a, there's been a document started in Google Docs. Um, so I have to pull in the URL for it, maybe I'll tweet it. And it, it has been tweeted actually, if you look at it, Martin Vorberg has actually tweeted the document. Yeah. And it points out all of it. I, he's one of the co-authors. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I think you're even <laughs> the I'm, I'm, I'm one yeah. of these people that kicked it off. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, but if you, if you look at the table where we, we say where we think there's a JGSR J, J to cover it, um, most of the sections we have been labeled, I don't know, labeled it, but by red, and I agree with that, that there's sort of green, yellow, and red, and most of it's red, some of it's yellow, and I think one of the sections is yeah, and it is, it is only green because we say we can use byte buffers with 32 bit, and if we need more RAM, we use multi segment byte buffer thingies, yes. which well, is it's just a workaround for non existing. The nice documents seem to be out of date, anyways, with the uh, recent statements and advancements and stuff like that. So. All right, so the war hunts are in the sandbox repo these days. Uh, I tweaked out the link. Yeah, I think we're almost right, like out of time probably. Right? No, five minutes. Five minutes? Five minutes. Okay. Five. <laughs> so Still working on it. Yeah, I haven't, I've never used the Twitter so I Okay. So five minutes should be fine for Heinz to, to give, do a performance review. <laughs> Well, it's going to be hard because, of course, uh, Alexi is going to tune his JMH. Any bar handle just makes it fast. <laughs> <laughs> you mean some heuristic that just <laughs> artificially makes it What's non executing it's anyway? JMH, bar handle, fast. <laughs> it doesn't really mean it. <laughs> we write the bike, we'll just put it in a call and see if it's bad. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that when FY is properly working, like people will do the most horrible peeking and poking of your nightmares that is like even faster or better or whatever on the same things you've done. I, I think we're gonna see monsters. Yeah, I, I, I think looking at the mailing list and at bar handles, there was one use case at up to now coming up that was not possible to optimize for the bar handles, yeah. which is if you have two arrays and you know they have exactly the same size, you would in theory you just need one bound check. Yeah. Because Hold ours so in, in the future with user definable intrinsics yes, and exactly. with and with FFI, in Java, I think we're going to see Java 11. very just, just non Java, Java 10. things Java that do exactly <laughs> what the high frequency industry needs as well. So it's not like we're, we're cl closing off any any uh, any unsafe uh, doors. Like <laughs> yeah, doing the, the safer way, maybe. Yeah, okay. Uh, so Alexei works for Oracle, so you can ask him any questions. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's writing. That Jeff, so that. <laughs> yeah, so um, I can only explain one at a time. <laughs> So you mean you well, see on your on your own side now? Yeah, your, I mean, the issue, uh, it, it, even even if it, the information is being communicated openly about the changes in I, there's still I would say the vast majority of the Java developers out there are completely clueless as to what's going to hit them. 
Uh, yeah, but the majority of Java developers out there aren't very dependent and unsafe. But the, I mean, if it's going to no, be. I mean, no, 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 no. I'm just talking about what Nine is going to do to them. Oh yes, the, mo the module stuff will be different. I mean, I'm, I'm worried about that personally, and uh, I'm worried about the day we actually start removing deprecated things from the JDK as well. But uh, uh, I mean, backwards compatibility is that forever or not? I'm not sure. I mean, one of the Java strengths is that we can take a class for someone built in '96 and run it on, on, on the modern JVM. Yeah, this amazing. will be the first time where this will sort of break. So it's working. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <coughs> yeah. I mean, but you know, so I mean, you know, part of the things are, at least I'm doing, and others people are doing, of course, out speaking, yeah, and doing stuff like that, is saying, like, one, you one need to start running this stuff online because. You know, yeah. things are I mean, things are moving around. Things are going to break. Things are working differently. But you go to the Scala world; they have like non-binary backwards compatibility and rewrite everything all the time. And people seem quite happy to work with Scala and redeploy on new Scala standards all the time. <laughs> yeah. no, why, why would they be using Scala otherwise? No, no, <laughs> no it's quite true. But you know, that people aren't actually happy to be doing that, and it, uh, that uh, volatility is actually kept. A lot of people off of Scala, so yep. I'm quite happy that they're volatile. That's way more, but I think it's pretty yeah. impressive to maintain so backwards compatibility in 20 uh, for 20 years. It's yeah. almost done. So sometimes, in order to go to the next level of evolution, I guess things have to change a little bit. And there's a massive jigsaw information campaign, but it's still going to people well, it's still going to catch people unaware. So it always does. Well, I mean, if you look at current JIT technology, it's based on something that's like how old? 95, 94. 95, 94, exactly. So. Um, so, you know, the question is, you know, uh, you know, how much longer is that even going to last? Or not how long should it last? Should, last should, I think. How long should it last? But that's an internal thing. That's, an, that's completely internal, so it's much easier. Everything that requires APIs and communication is, is much slower. So, I mean, we can rewrite the compiler inside Oracle and not, like, interact with a single soul. Uh, so, it, it, has, it has potential to be easy to replace. Really. Do, do, you, do you really think so? I mean, the compiler is part of the OpenJDK project. Isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, we still we still have communicated with them on the OpenJDK, but it's still still things such. It, it, it's, yeah, but you it, said it's you lost let public APIs. Yeah, that's true. But because you said you could rewrite in your compiler without telling a single well, soul, I don't think so. It's you will see a jack when people would. I mean, but yeah, sure, people could get involved in that. Again, it's a, it's a strange open it's a strange open source project. This job thing. <laughs> it's, it is at least an open source project. <laughs> Okay, I think and, um, we all agree that we don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think we all agree that getting rid of unsafe is, I, is, I mean, even when they start chucking more stuff into unsafe to support eight, we're going like, okay, hey guys, what are you doing? You don't really want to be doing this. But there didn't seem to be like another bucket where you could throw all of the, all of the trash into at that point. Yeah, I think the biggest the yeah, it's, it's really, I think yeah. the biggest problem will actually be libraries that are not updated anymore because we're feature complete yes. or something. That's absolutely will be the biggest that's true issue. for the entire jigsaw thing. So, so yeah. I totally agree. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of tool breakage. Oh yeah, yeah. there already is a lot of tool oh, yeah. breakage. Jigsaw is the single most disruptive change in JDK history. I think. <laughs> right. Absolutely. People have been talking about it for more than ten years. It was going to come out in Java 7, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was changed quite a bit over time and over and over and over again. I think from, for us, we, we have access to the source. So if things have to change, we can change them quite quickly. Yeah. And it's just we don't know what they're going to change to. Mm -hmm. It's more it's, uh, it's mm -hmm. for the people that don't write the software, can't change. Oh. They're the ones that are going to be fearful any kind of change, more than that. And, and, and you really don't understand it. They don't want to understand it. By the way, yeah. maybe maybe you are allowed to talk about it. I'm not sure. Um, everybody recognized that there will be a parameter, but Mark made a weird, say, a weird sentence about something like, it will also be able to recover unsafe using reflection. Are you, any idea what that means? I have no idea what that means. Okay. Because I, my, my, my guess is you have to use the parameter and obviously you can ref use reflection then because the package is exported. It might, might mean that you don't even need that parameter. That would be cool. <laughs> I, I haven't heard the comments. I don't know the context. Or, 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 or.
I'm not sure what we call it. Parameter all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said it somewhere on the mailing list or something, yeah, right? Yeah, but it's really clear or something. Like oh, yeah, it's something like that. that. It was, a, was at least a weird comment. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for discussion. Thank you.